Hey guys, welcome back. It's Carter from BBT. I'm gonna get right into the point on this one. I've had a lot of requests on what happened to Ethereum Classic. What's going on with this block reorg? Is it a 51% attack or not? What's it look like? There's the reports that are out there. Trying to explain what happened is still pretty kind of a gray area. Let's go through real quick what is known and then kind of from a minor perspective what I believe more than likely happened and then how that kind of works in the you know because a lot of folks don't understand if a miner goes offline um, how is it producing blocks how is it competing that sort of thing. So let's get right into it. What are the known facts? We know the miner's address that was broadcasted when the reorg was sent with its longest chain to try to compete with mainnet right we know that pruning nodes had stopped syncing and pruning nodes are essentially smaller state um it's the smaller state of what a particular blockchain is so if you have a full node you could say like ethereum classic i don't know what the exact node size is but let's say it's a terabyte a pruning node will have enough information about the blockchain to be able to get back to the root hash right so it's a it's a reduced set it's using algebra to figure out like I'm confident enough I can keep the state of the chain in check, but with less space, right? So it's like a reduced amount. Um, so there has to be some math done when it's doing its work to make sure that it's at its current state. And we know that those nodes had froze up. Um, that was one of the leading indicators to show that there was something going on. The um, reorg took place on August 1st, and it was about 3,693 blocks. Roughly 12 hours of mining had occurred. Well, mind you, mainnet was going that entire time. It was just at a point this miner came back online and then broadcasted essentially all of their work that was in competition with the other main network and that i'm going to get into why that matters and why if you like you are a home miner with just a couple of rigs yourself and if you were set up a full node and you created all of the ecosystem you needed to in an offline state to get work go through try to solve the work produce a block at a certain difficulty level and then broadcast your work if you were to come back online how you would not have enough proof of work nor at the right difficulty level to to broadcast and the chain would go oh you don't have this is no way that this chain is correct because you don't you didn't do enough work where we get into this issue and where you get into the question of was it a 51 percent attack was the ethereum classic chain over that period of time had about three to four tera hash of total network hash power so for a miner to be offline and then submit a series of blocks that would lock all that network up it looks and feels like a 51 percent attack because they had enough hash power to at least produce enough blocks with the right set of difficulty to then compete with the main net chain and uh, there's from some of the questions i've gotten it it seems that there's that confusion where people don't understand how miners could work in an offline state and what's going on is in in that world is you can create that ecosystem within you know your building or whatever you had enough hash power to where you have spun up your own full nodes and you are essentially submitting work to those kind so you're acting like your own pool right so you have all the information you need locally to go through and produce the proof of work that's required for the miners to work on and then be able to submit your results create your own blocks and then broadcast those to the rest of the network right and then the, everything's interconnected in that state if a big large miner that has two plus three tera hash of potential mining power on etash and they went offline this is what ends up happening this is where we get into the words that i've used before called phantom mining to where if you're trying to compete you'll have your main net nodes with your wallet that you're sending out ethereum or ethereum classic on to an exchange you sell it and then you broadcast your you bring your your hash power online and broadcasts the fact that you have the longest chain where that event didn't happen and now you've reorged it. So that's where people a 51% attack is they'll they'll be working the content offline locally and then broadcast their work that would compete with that chain. Um, in this case, it doesn't look like because I haven't seen any exchanges come back and say that they've um, as part of this reorg there was some kind of transaction that occurred that now has been erased because these folks had broadcasted a chain where 
it reverse that transaction. You can have adverse effects to where even if it's not malicious, that people, all that work that people have done and any exchanging that had occurred and any of that kind of stuff is all erased if that became the longest chain, right? Because it's just a rework of history is what it comes down to. But in closing, to kind of wrap this up, it looks like that reorg is part of the current longest chain. There hasn't been any exchanges that I've seen come out and say, hey, there was a double spend and this is included as part of this reorg. It looks like it was just a a situation where a miner that had everything that they needed to be able to produce their own blocks, their own localized pool, had went offline and had broadcasted that network. And given the state of Ethereum Classic's total mining hash power and the fact that somebody could power project that much hash power, we have this situation that we have right now. I will continue to monitor this and let you guys know if I see any other details that you need to change um, on you know the local mining scene when it comes to Ethereum Classic. But right now, I just wanted to make sure I got some content out there for you guys to understand and like how a miner could do this, how this works when you we, we talk offline state. And of course, if I missed anything or you guys have any questions, definitely put them down in the comments below. I do read your comments. Make sure that if we need to correct anything, I'll, I'll, I'll have that corrected. I know there's a few points that I've not covered in this. I know that two miners, the mining pool was down for maintenance at the same time, which could also affect the likelihood that somebody else mining offline garner enough hash power against the total global hash power at the turn at that current time to create this situation. Um, I mean, there's a ton of variables in this, but I wanted to at least cover some of the scope on what's going on. Um, and let's get some more content out here, guys. Hopefully I can get some of this stuff answered for you. Have some more stuff coming up later this week. We're gonna be tearing down a couple mining rigs and getting them ready to go for you. And I should have all the live stream equipment in and I can actually get my main setup going back for us. Love hearing from you guys and I'll catch you guys later.